What's good guys, it's Ron's Rise. I am standing in front of the Maserati Quattro Porte S for 2018. I have the key here and we are at Maserati Alfa Romeo of Daytona Beach. I want to show you guys this model. I think I've done a quick look at it over in the showroom when we had it in there, but since we have it outside now, I feel like you need to see um, this spec out in the light. And I know a subscriber did mention to me that they wanted to see it out here. So here we are. It has the maroon interior, and I may not be pronouncing that right. It may be different, but I'll show you the sticker. It is M-A-R-R-O-N-E, so I'm going to go with that. But as I always state, my Italian isn't the best, but pretty much chocolate in the interior. So we're going to go step inside and just show you really quickly a quick glimpse of that chocolate interior before we get to the full look of the car. But yeah, there you go. And you can tell big time that there's the chocolate there. Let me get my head shot out of the way because this is normally black and everything's black on the steering wheel. But with this, it has the maroon leather wrapped steering wheel uh, with the maroon center and the chrome trident right there. So you can see the offset there. and You know that it is not black. Um, everything is maroon. Even the door is all in that color. So it's a, I call it chocolate, obviously. Um, it reminds me of the Stelvio's chocolate interior, which is actually called chocolate, but it's a great spec. We'll get to that in a second. So this 2018 has base model options. It is an S, so the power is there, but it does have base model options like the Poseidon wheels here with the gloss black calipers and white script. The Pirelli P0 tires are all season tires here as well. But the pole sidings look all right. They're not too bad. Um, they're a little small for my taste, but they fit this car very well. They do also have the full LED headlights here um, for 2018. And I'll turn those on so you can see them in action. But right now you are actually seeing the running lights um, as you would have them when you're driving. Looks pretty good there. You also have your big shark nose grill, which they're doing very well for 2018. So you see the chrome up top and the black in the back with the chrome strip going right across here. Um, you do have your lip down here under your front grill. And this you can normally do in a gloss if you have, um, if you have it optioned out that way. Or in the Grand Sport model, you know that there is different styling here, front of the grill here and the bottom lip there is uh, different styling as well. But this is what you would get with the base model styling. And it looks really good as well. Um, it's very subtle, very under the radar, which that's what this kind of spec is. You know, you don't want to be too flashy with this. This is a champagne and chocolate. Very, you know, luxury and lavish. When you think of that, you know, luxury, you think of champagne, or you think of gold, or you think, you know, that kind of color. So this goes really well with what they were trying to do with this spec. In the rear, you're looking at the signature Quattro Porte look. Um, a lot of the Ghibli, what they did with the newer models for 2018 was take a lot of the styling from the Quattro Porte and put it on the Ghiblis. So you're getting that same diffuser um, that was on the new Ghiblis for 2018 on the Quattro Porte, which has been here. And you know, it's just one of those things to where it worked for this car. So they implemented it onto the Ghibli. Um, this has a base diffuser, so there's nothing color match as you would get in a Lusso or a sport model of the Quattro Porte, but it looks really good. Like I said, it's under the radar again. It's not too flashy, but classy. Under the hood, you have your 424 horsepower and 428 foot-pounds of torque V6 twin turbo engine, just the same as the Ghibli. And the Ghibli for the Grand Sport models and the Lusso and the S and SQ4s are running the exact same specs as this. So there's not much of a difference between this, this engine um, that is on the Quattro Porte S and SQ4 and Grand Sports and Grand Lucelles than it is on the Ghibli. ZF transmission, eight speed, and this also has a skyhook suspension as well. So it's adjustable suspension with the dampers and everything there. But same engine, um, same powertrain, is just in the Quattro Porte. Now where you get the most shine from the Quattro Porte than you do the Ghibli is the space in the back. So if you've ever seen my video of me getting into the back of the Ghibli, it's pretty tight there when you, you know, have a backseat passenger. Hopping in the back of this, you can already tell, like, look at the ample amount of room I have and my feet aren't even all the way back to the seat. Just all of the space I have just 
I mean, it's it's crazy how much bigger it is. And I mean, that's that's the reason why you have two cars that are pretty much in the same kind of market, two four-door sedans for Maserati, uh, one bigger and more luxurious and, and more for the luxury class. And then the other one is kind of more sportier, smaller, and you know, just kind of does just enough. But the Quattro Porte, it tries to be that elegance and that room and accommodate you in every kind of way. So you can see the space here is very, very, very different from the Ghibli. I have too much room here almost. And even with this, the seat is back here a little bit further, you can still see there's tons of room even with the seat back there. So your driver should have no problem sitting in here and being comfortable while driving while your passenger is just as comfortable in the back. The headroom is pretty good as well. Um, I am 5'11", six foot on a good day. You can kind of see the headroom there. For me, it's not bad at all because I'm nowhere near touching that roof. Um, while we're here, you do have the vent shade up here. You can also do a vent shade in the back. You do have your beautiful, beautiful wood with chrome trim. Um, the Quattro Porte does this over the Ghibli to where this will be aluminum in the Ghibli. This is chrome in the Quattro Porte, which looks very nice. And this interior color is just, you know, like I said, I like to call it chocolate, but we know it's maroon. Um, and if I'm pronouncing that right, um, it just looks so elegant with the, this trim level. It's, I'm very, very, very blown away by it. And I just kind of wanted to show it to you just to see if you were as well. Also in the back here, you do get a little bit more styling than the Ghibli. Um, the Ghibli just has the vents here. This has the uh, black piano wood in the back and it also has a little space for storage there. So you can put phones or anything there if you want. Also, if you go into the seats back here, you do have your cup holder space there and then you do have storage and charging right here in the center as well. Also a small detail that the Quattro Porte does really well and you know the little things matter is the backing here matching the seat and it not being a cheap material or, or you know a net or anything like that. It actually looks like it form fits with the seat and it goes very well for any kind of storage compartment here that you may put you know like papers or any kind of plastics or anything like that that you would just slide in here. It is not a ton of space but it's there and it looks really good. It's just it blends in very nicely, it's seamless. Now I'm gonna open up the trunk to the QP. Ample amount of space. It goes pretty deep back there. Seats do fold down, so you can fold down all those rear seats to give you even more space. Net on the side, 12 volt plug-in. Cigarette lighter, I believe. Yeah, that kind of plug-in. And also, spare tire in the back with your tools. And you have your battery on this side here as well, if I can get out of the shadow. <laughs> Automated for the close, close, close and lock. We're just gonna close. Hopping in the front seat here. This interior is just crazy color. Um, Quattro Porte normally does it a little different with the styling on the car. So you're getting a much better look as far as just quality, as far as elegance, very smooth with the trim that kind of flies across the dash here and it goes all the way and carries through to the other side. They do a really good job at implementing just elegance and style inside of this car. Besides the upper dash changing, clock placement and everything, you won't notice too much of a difference between the Quattro Porte and the Ghibli as far as the rest of the car goes. You'll notice it right up top here. But other than that, the same layout as far as the gear select, the drive modes. Um, this does have the Skyhook suspension. So, you know, if you press that down, you will get the suspension sport mode. So if I press it, you'll see it's off. Press it, sport suspension on, and there you are. You do have your traction here. You have your manual button there. So if I were to press manual, you'll see that it will light up there. Um, if you press ice, you know, that is for more slipperier um, traction, you know, in the wet and the snow kind of mode, you know, most fuel efficient, most under the radar sport. We know what that is. You press that and you're going to open up those valves and you're going to get that throttle response. Um, it's the mode that I always drive in. So it is definitely my favorite mode. Um, hazards here, you do have your storage under there as well. With the aux, you have the USB and you have the SD card kind of hidden away there. The cup holders also hidden away here with this door. So a lot of the same stuff 
as the Ghibli as far as the layout goes. Not too much has changed. Extra cup holders there, plug in there. Seats, very nice. They have a little different layout than the Ghibli as far as the seams and stitching goes. Um, there's a lot more detail in the stitching and the seats of the Quattro Porte. Um, that's just what you get when you, you know, you pay a little bit of extra for those special details. It's just something that really, really you can appreciate because if you're putting an extra dollar in, you want to separate yourself from something that you would pay, you know, less for. So this is why you pay more for it. You know, you want it to feel special to you. And that is one of the things that does very well with this car. You also, and I noticed that it looks really good. This pillar is not in black. It's in brown with the door. It matches completely. So, I mean, like I said, it's just very seamless and how it flows. And then you have the ultra light headliner and pillars that look really good as well with this color. It almost is like a champagne in that sense as well. Sunroof there as well. Slide it back. Then you will press your buttons to slide it all the way back as well to get that natural light, natural air. We'll close that back up. And there you are. Another design element that's a little different from the Ghibli is you do have chrome around the Speedo here on both sides as well as chrome around the bezels uh, for the HVAC, which is really nice as well. So you get that chrome just flying through here, just kind of seeping through, and you also get it with the wood trim. So it flows really nicely together. I think they did a good job on the elegant factor is that because you know, this it's, it's trimmed with chrome everywhere along the gear select, along all of the toggle switches, along the steering wheel, um, the door as we already saw, lined in chrome, even the memory switches are lined in chrome. So it's just a really nice look and just nice little touches. No paddle shifters or aluminum pedals with this spec. Um, it's more of a elegant, classy spec. So, you know, it's not the sporty spec. There's a big difference between the two. Sport, you'll see carbon fiber, you'll see pedals, you'll see, you know, a more aggressive diffuser and front bumper and stuff. This is kind of staying away from that and sticking to its theme. So it's not an identity crisis to where it doesn't know what it's trying to do. Um, so that's why you don't see it in this car or this spec specifically. Um, I think they did a really good job at just how it looks and how it flows. Um, you know, it's one of those things to where you either love it or hate it, especially with this color. Um, and you know, it just really depends and it's very subjective, but I think they did a really good job with it. Maserati touch control as in all vehicles for 2017 and 2018. Um, the same 8.4 inch screen here. It looks really good. It controls really good. I've gone over this in plenty of the videos. It's all the same. So definitely look that up if you want to know more about this system, but it's a pretty good system um, and, and I, I praise it highly. You do have a pretty large reverse camera as you do with the Ghibli models. Looks really good. This does not have a 360 view. Um, other models do if you optional out with driver assistance packages and stuff like that which this car does not have you'll have different views for the car and you'll be able to see more um, same with if i were to go over here to the steering wheel these are actually blank buttons so if i had the driver assistance package and stuff like that i'd be able to use these buttons for like lane departure assist etc so they'd have these buttons actually functional to where this doesn't have that package you know so you're paying less and getting less as far as that goes you do have the blind spot monitoring though um, right there you see the triangle in the mirror and also like the ghibli once you put it in reverse the mirror will tilt down and give you a better point of view there and then if you put it back in drive or park or wherever you may be it goes right back up in a drop of a dime now checking out the headlights completely on with the hazards and indicators flashing You'll see that it is a switchback LED. So it goes from the bright white or bright blue to yellow when blinking, both along here and right up top here of the strip. And then you can see the LED headlight there as well. Looks very good. We'll step back a little bit more so you can see it. And then we'll go back even more to see the full front. And there you are. Coming to the rear may not be as visible, but we are getting 
the LED with the flashing indicator as well. You'll be able to see it more on this side, on the shaded side of the car. Like I said, they look really good. I definitely would like a little refresh to it, but they're fine for right now. They wouldn't sway me away from getting one of these models just because of uh, me wanting a refresh, that's for sure. Premium gas in these cars, press here. No cap, just stick it right in. It does show you your instructions there, but it is premium fuel only. Everything on the Speedo is pretty much the same as most Maseratis um, as far as the Levante and Ghibli go. Um, same top speed, same RPM, same layout here. Um, they just, like I said, did the chrome along the Speedo for the trim, but you're getting your vehicle settings, your store messages, audio, start, stop, um, your trip, your fuel economy, your drive mode, which we're in normal, your vehicle info, um, tire pressure, and your main menu and to do those things you would scroll using this all right and then you would press this to enter okay and then press this for back so you can go even more in detail by just pressing this in and now look at you're seeing instead of the tire pressure you're seeing the temp you're seeing temp again you're seeing oil pressure you're seeing battery voltage you're seeing maintenance now you're back to tire pressure. So this just cycles through the menu here um, you, by scrolling either up or down and then going back here along with your voice free, or sorry, voice free, <laughs> hands free controls there. So it's a nice little setup, it's easy, it's at your fingertips. Also you have your volume controls on the back so you can do volume on this side and then on this side you can change the station. So it's just easy, everything's right here at your fingertips, which makes it a lot more convenient. You might not know until you don't have it anymore and you're like, oh, you're reaching everywhere for stuff and it just, it's a nice layout on the steering wheel. So here we are with the sticker of the Quattro Porte. As you can see, champagne on the exterior and maroon on the interior. Your base price, 105. This one doesn't have many options at all. So after destination fees, your options and tax and everything, you're looking at, there we go, okay, get it zoomed in. 110,450 for this car specifically. This is gonna be your fuel consumption and economy there. And then we'll look at the rest of the standard things that we have on the car. Stuff like Harman Kardon sound, the 19 inch wheels, matte black calipers, you have your comfort and convenience, that 8.4 inch screen there, you have your wood trim, you have your 12 way adjustable seats, rear bench seats, power trunk as we showed, and you can also have a few things up here, and there's that Harman Kardon sound we were talking about, blind spot assist, the parking sensors which is definitely key, LED lamps, front and back, start stop mode. Then you have also that 18 inch wheel in the back. So that's what you're looking at, 110 for this specific model if you want this Quattro Porte S. So what do you guys think about the Quattro Porte S for 2018? This is a pretty base standard model, so you're not getting tons of extra options and features um, that I could go over. A lot of the stuff is stuff that is on the Ghibli already, so you have seen it before. Um, the Grand Sport Quattro Porte here has a lot more to it, styling-wise, um, function-wise. It's just a different kind of beast. And then, you know, there's the Quattro Porte GTS with the twin turbo V8. We're actually getting one of those in pretty soon, so I can't wait to show you guys that. So I'm gonna wrap it up here, but hopefully you guys enjoyed my quick overview over this car and you got to little, know a little bit more about it. And I wanna know, do you enjoy this spec? I think it's super classy. Just like the Blue Passion Ghibli that I had with um, the, the Xena interior, this is a really nice, classy, luxury spec as far as the champagne and the chocolate interior goes for me. It just looks really good, the color combination with the, the, the wood and the chrome trim. It's definitely something I see like a lawyer driving or, you know, uh, an, an agent or, you know, anything like that. It's just 
really nice. So I wanna know if you guys agree with me. Um, that's part of the reason why I wanted to show you this car, just because I really liked um, how it looks and it's just like very elegant so hopefully you enjoyed it if you did give the video a like you know we need to get it up in the ranking so you know we can get more of these out there and you gotta also subscribe to the channel if you like the maserati alfa romeo videos that i'm shelling out for you guys and also with that i definitely want you to comment and just let me know what you think about this spec would you spec yours out this way or what would you change i'm curious and to let you guys know vacation is starting soon i will be disappearing for a week so if you don't see me for a week this will be coming soon and i will be out in the bahamas i do have that giveaway going so make sure you check the previous giveaway video um, of me taking time off of youtube so you can enter that and win with that said this has been ron's rides love you guys thank you for the support we will talk to you in the next video take it easy be blessed peace don't, 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 don't.